My fields are filled with sorghum. My tractor's filled with gas. And my greenhouse needs water, man. It's time to farm. Welcome back to Broke to Billionaire, man. You know how it is. I'm trying to go from broke all the way to a billion dollars. Last episode, we made some pretty dramatic changes. Our previously all grass into silage setup actually got changed. I expanded out, getting a few more fields, including a gigantic one over yonder. In addition to that, planted all of them with sorghum. Uh, we're trying a little bit of a crop rotation this year. Seeing how that works out, I think it should earn us a ton of money and it just allows us to use some new equipment and speaking of new equipment got that brand new well definitely not brand new <laughs> We got that used harvester, and it is sitting here just waiting for its first harvest later this year. You can see that boy right there next to the chicken coop. Oh, baby, it's looking good. So all our fields of sorghum, including both of those right there, are actually good all the way until they're fully grown and ready to be harvested. In the meantime, we got a few chores to do today. Need to refill this here water, maybe get a little bit of liquid fertilizer for this greenhouse. The everyday chores of a farmer really, really won't make the homestead hum, you know? I don't know if you guys can hear that, but there's a little bit of bird noise. I actually looked into a mod, it's called Critters. It just enhances the background noise a little bit instead of it just permanently being those like crows cawing it switches things up a little bit and I really liked it I love stuff like that just a little more ambiance spice things up while I'm driving around with this 8,000 liter tank of water <laughs> on the uh, farm homestead circuit. I should make this into like a, a Mario Kart map, you know? This little this little loop here. The Elm Creek circuit. Ready, go! So we do have one field, which is actually coincidentally right over there, that little green one there. That one is still planted with grass. So we will do a full harvest of that as soon as it's ready, I think in another month or two. So we're going to be able to do that. We're going to be able to still use our silage cream Creating setup. Now, the one thing I'm actually thinking about doing is replacing those silos right there. I might not sell them right away since they do have a lot of silage in them. Also, I did not fill this up. What am I doing, man? They still have quite a bit of grass turning into silage in them, and I don't know if it's quite worth it to try to move all of that to a new silo. So I probably will keep them for now and consider selling them later. It's probably not a terrible idea to just keep them around just in case in the future we decide to increase our setup a little bit or something along those lines. But I just think it's worth to invest in making all of our silage pump out a bit faster. Some of these other silos are a little more high tech. They got a little more like additive. They can produce it a bit faster. So I'm thinking about doing that. It just makes it so I have a lot less silage just sitting in a tank, slowly cooking up and eventually becoming uh, becoming silage that I can sell. This is the very end of April. We just got done planting last episode, and I think that's pretty much it for the month. You can see our grass here is growing. I think it should be ready to harvest one next month, but then we're not actually going to harvest it until the month after that. So I'll be seeing you guys tomorrow or even the next day because we don't have too much going on. Oh, one thing I realized I completely forgot here is there is a header in the used vehicle sale. Now, this one isn't the exact one that's meant to be run with our class harvester there, which is this guy. Technically, it's supposed to be this header right here, but you can actually run a slightly bigger header on it. Right now, this is only 38,000 and it's actually bigger. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and get that purchased. So yeah, in addition to having a harvester that can't actually harvest anything, we got a header that it can uh, it can be used on there to harvest all those grains. Pretty excited about being able to do that harvest later this year is going to be very very exciting to do that for the very first time the closest we've done is that one canola harvest I did maybe a couple episodes now and that was just because they were already planted on that big field over there and we were just uh, harvesting what we bought but now it'll be from start to finish our entire harvest I mean look at this guy this is quite the harvester now now I am a little sad that it doesn't match the color scheme, but other than that, I mean, it's a big header. It's gonna run great. They both run at the same speed. This one just has a slightly larger uh, working width. And speaking of which, I mean, <laughs> 
Uh, driving around on this farm is starting to get harder and harder, man. I don't know where we are supposed to go with this thing. I don't think I could park it where I was normally parking it. I might just bring this out over here somewhere. I don't know. Need more space, man. I think something like this is probably fine. <laughs> It'll just be off in the bushes. Oh, man. Well, good morning, everybody. It is bright and early in June. You can see, look at this beautiful, beautiful sorghum just starting to sprout, starting to grow. It's got a couple more months to go for harvest in August. Wasn't much to do in May. We were pretty much just waiting for everything to be harvested. So went ahead and just went right through that. But now we actually have a little bit to mow, a little bit to do here. So time to get that started. All right, so just heading on over with our mower here man so this is our only grass field left it's just right over here look at that beautiful grass stage two ready to go a beautiful yellowish grass that means it's ready to go man so we got a guy starting on the mowing the beautiful beautiful mowing so the other thing I've actually been thinking about adding is, like I said last month, a new silo. And I think I've actually found a pretty good one here. Now it might seem kind of weird to be spending this money, but I think it actually makes a lot of sense. Oh man, those cicadas are going off. I think it actually makes a lot of sense. Um, this will process all of the silage a lot quicker and it works in pretty much the same way. You just drop in your grass or straw, chaff, all that sort of stuff, and it'll just slowly ferment while sitting in this silo. The other thing is we're starting to run out of space in this little homestead area. And especially with the shape of this one where I have to dump it in on one side and gather out the other side, I think I might actually just move things down. Maybe it's kind of weird to just have our random silo sitting here, but it's right next to the road and I think it actually looks pretty good. With all that being said, I think I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get this placed here. All right, now look at that. I just cleaned it up a little bit and we're definitely hurting for money, but we're looking good there so i am just going to be dumping our grass straight into there the main thing i'm going to have to fix now is any auto drive settings so we can easily dump and take out of that thing as well all right so we got our foraging started here mowing is all done this quick little field shouldn't be too busy of a month and we'll be able to get right on to the good stuff, aka harvesting all of that delicious, delicious sorghum. We got our new silo over here, did a little bit of auto drive shenanigans to make it so we can automatically offload from that forage harvest over there. Oh man, that hawk. Whoa, did you see that? So I'm liking how it's looking. It's a little bit basic right now, but I mean, we're, we're just slowly upgrading, man, adding more and more and more and more. And by more and more and more and more, I mean more and more debt, man. <laughs> we are heavily in debt. Ooh, I gotta tell myself to avoid this every single time, man. <laughs> We have the bumpiest farm I've ever seen. <laughs> That's the one downside of some of these rolling hills. Not that the, these hills are exactly super rolling, but you know. Got the chicken food eventually, and then of course there was barely in there. That's just a classic, man. <laughs> these half full bags of chicken food absolutely killed me. Oh, first try. I know no one's gonna believe me because I can edit it around, but that actually was first try for that bag. And look at this guy offloading at the brand new silo, filling her up with that beautiful grass, man. All right, so just finishing up, grabbing the last of the grass here from our one harvest of the year, or one harvest of this month specifically. Another solid day of foraging. I'm liking how this silo's looking over here. I mean, who knows, maybe we'll build out over here a little bit more, maybe not, I don't know. Just uh, was running out of space on the actual homestead over there. So we, we do what we must. And yeah, there we go, look at that. So we'll just drop that off and we're, we're done for June, man. Well, good morning, August of year five. It's 6.30 in the morning and I'm looking at these fields, man. They look beautiful and ready to harvest. Ooh, tis the season, tis the season. Time to officially get using this guy. So exciting. Oh man, I think I'm actually gonna start with this front field because it is a tricky operation not driving over this stuff sometimes i mean look i'm grazing the sorghum right now man even getting out of our driveway with this header 
<laughs> so I think this initial product at least will mostly be storing in those free silos over there at the train station if I can see through those trees. Yeah, we'll be storing it over there just because you can use it for free. Now, the only thing I got to keep in mind is that I'm going to want to use at least some of it to feed our chickens over there. So we have a whole lot to do today. We will be harvesting all of the sorghum, planting all these fields with grass and doing all the associated stuff with that. Oh man, I love this harvester. I love seeing how it shoots out behind it. I think that animation's really cool. How it kind of does it side to side. I mean, I know that's how it is in real life too, but that doesn't mean it's not cool, okay, man? When I love the color of that sorghum. This is actually my very first time doing my own sorghum harvest ever. I know he's gonna do a good job on this corner, right? Oh, man. <laughs> well, close enough, I suppose. I mean, this is just what it's all about, man. This is just what it's all about. So I'll have to think about how I want to go about all this. I'm pretty sure if I use a direct drill planter, it'll just go right over this. Now, I did find a good one of that blue kins model that I'm a big, big fan of. It can be run by the tank tractor, and I think that is just going to be the next step here. So we might as well get it leased out. While these guys get started on this field, I mean, by the way, look at the teamwork over there. There's something about a combine offloading to a trailer as it's as it's harvesting. That's just so cool. I've always loved that. So I think while they're doing this, I'll probably just get all the pallets unloaded here. It shouldn't take too long. It'll give us a little bit of a head start if we want to get something else started like planting. So we're going to be doing this on every single field today, running our harvester, offloading and sending it to that grain silo with you know some of it heading over here for our chickens <laughs> can't forget them chickens man all right so we are still just getting this field harvested here just working on a few side deals at the same time waiting with the tank tractor over there to pick up a planter as soon as that field is done and we will just go ahead and get that planted right back to grass Got a little more water to fill up. I feel like I'm doing this every other month. Someday uh, greenhouses will just be a lot easier to maintain because I can get some of those bigger water trailers um, that you need a dolly or a semi truck for. Almost definitely be getting a semi truck or even like multiple by the time this series is over. So refilling them won't be nearly as much of a pain because the main issue with this right now is that this tank is just, it only holds 8,000 liters and that greenhouse can hold like, I don't know, like 80,000 liters or something. Maybe less than that, but it takes a good five to 10 runs of water to fill this thing up. One day, one day everything will be scaled up and a lot easier. I'm getting very close to being done here maybe what like two three more passes and this field will be all harvested i love watching automatic offload happening <laughs> It's my favorite. I mean, this is kind of what the game's all about right here, in my opinion. When you do these harvests, this just this is just so cool. Be able to just be offloading the tank while you're still harvesting multiple pieces of equipment, everyone working together, man. Of course, it's not a harvest without somebody pouring grain on the roof of somebody else's <laughs> tractor, man. All right, so this greenhouse is all filled up. You can see it holds 30,000 liters, and that tank holds... 8,000 liters or so of water, so we have to do quite a few runs there. All right, we are just finishing up this field. I'm driving up to this guy right here to get the last of the sorghum out of the tank. Oh man, what a harvest. What a harvest. So got the harvester starting on that next field. Now what I'm gonna actually do with the sorghum here is I wanna give some of this to the chickens right away um, and then just deliver the rest of it over to our silo over there and by our silo I mean the free silo they let you use at the uh, grain pool man no reason not to use that and we're actually right next to the grain pool so it really works out it should automatically stop once that's full oh my god it instantly filled up yeah it might be a good idea one of these times um, to upgrade our chicken setup because the one problem I have I love how that coop looks it's awesome the one thing I don't like about it is that its food capacity is like non-existent. <laughs> It is so tiny. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this on over to the grain pool, offloading the good old sorghum there. I mean, look at all of that beautiful sorghum. I really like how it looks. Really got that like dark reddish 
color to it. Dark reddish brown. It's very pretty. So we actually can get our planting started here. It does not look like this guy is fertilized at all. So we will be filling the uh, plants are up with fertilizer and getting that taken care of. So this planter is awesome because it can still do the fertilizing. It can do the direct drill. It's just great. And it has a huge working width of 18 meters, which is very nice. So we got our seeds right here. The Massey Ferguson's just coming back from his contract. Very nice. Get this all lined up. Always easier said than done with this friggin' driveway I got <laughs> right up against a wall. Wouldn't hurt to get a bit more space, but you know, whatever. Let's get this thing lowered and turned on and get it going here. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Now let's make sure we got it all planted here. You can see right there grass and you can see stage one of fertilizing too. Awesome. Okay, this thing is working perfect. So you can see we're gonna we're gonna take care of this field really fast really really fast because <laughs> you can drive pretty quick with this thing too this field's always uh you know not, not my favorite in that regard there's just not a lot of space around the field itself to work um, but we'll get it all handled. It'll be fine. It's really just the headland pass that's the most important mm, we got a little little skosh of uh <laughs> The field there, not planted towards the end. Oh man, I am kind of jackknifing this thing. I wonder if I should have just grabbed that tractor weight. I might just go grab that real quick. I think it would help my uh, handling a little bit here. You can see those two are working great over there. Everybody is working the farm today, man. So we did get that tractor weight, I want to say last episode the episode prior I keep forgetting i have it but yeah it's a it's a nice one i've mainly only had to use it for the tank tractor when i use some of this really heavy equipment i think it would be pretty helpful for the uh, massey ferguson as well when i'm doing front loading stuff maybe 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 would prevent us from doing a few more front wheelies but <laughs> where's the fun in that man already got that tractor weight there you can still see it's a little uh it's taking my tracks off the ground a little bit I I don't know why i guess it's just the change in elevation or something or when i'm turning i don't know i think it's just that it's heavy around uh around the outside when i have it all unfolded like this so yeah, we'll get this all set up here it just makes turning a little bit harder than it needs to be <laughs> Once we get it all straightened out, I think it'll be fine. Doing a little bit of a sloppy headland pass here. I mean, this thing moves pretty fast, man. I'm not used to this, but this is way quicker than the one we had last time, so I'm pretty happy with it so far. But yeah, we should get this field done real fast. Shouldn't take too long at all. We're just taking it back and forth here, getting this all taken care of. Loving this planter. This might have to be a uh, purchase long term. It's one of my favorite planters in the entire game, just because of the work with the speed um, this one does have the capability and maybe it's a little unrealistic but it does roll the field at the same time I'm not sure if I love that or not I thought I'd give it a whirl just this time um it's kind of weird though <laughs> it just doesn't it's very unrealistic um it's one of the first times I've I've tried something now that, out that's kind of unrealistic in this challenge to that degree at least uh, to that degree at least so I don't know maybe in the future I'll just um, turn that part off but I, I just thought I'd give it a whirl you know just I saw it was an option but I tend to to favor a little bit of realism um, and this plant is just awesome even even without that capability so I'll probably uh, I'll probably just turn that off in the future but either way it is taking care of this field so fast that harvest over there is coming along really well too only issue is turning this guy it's not my favorite when it's raised but that might just be something i can i'm probably something i'm doing honestly <laughs> i think there's probably an easier way to do a lot of this We'll probably need some more fertilizer. Amount of seeds we have might actually cover everything. We're, we're using a lot less of that than I expected. But the fertilizer, we'll probably have to buy some more. Fertilizing while you're planting is just really nice because it just cuts down the number of times you have to run your other fertilizer spreader there. All right, should be our final pass here. Look at that field, just so pretty. Yeah, I think the uh, rolling is just gonna be a one-time thing. Definitely saves time and everything, but it just is kind of weird. <laughs> 
I don't love that that part. Just it ain't right, man. It ain't right. But either way, we got that whole field covered. It just looks beautiful. So fully fertilized. No weeds. Awesome. So it is all taken care of. It literally just needs to be fertilized next month. But man, look at that field growing grass yet again. And this was a very painless process actually rotating between the two. I had to do a lot when I initially planted the sorghum and I wonder if that might be a thing again because I think planting grass actually resets several things like it makes the weeding grow again. It makes it so it has to be rolled. I assume that would need to be rolled after I had normally planted if this planter didn't have that functionality. And yeah, one, as soon as they're done harvesting that field, I can get going on that one as well. So that's pretty cool. So we'll, we'll, we'll definitely be doing that just without the roller in the future. I don't really love that that much, but we'll just roll with it today since I already have it leased out and whatever. Just saves me a little bit of time. Uh, I, I do actually enjoy rolling the fields too, so I don't know. It was just uh, one of those little extra options you could have in there. I should probably move out of the way, by the way. thought it was interesting without really keeping in mind how unrealistic it is. <laughs> but it's just kind of weird, man. I, I don't mind convenience stuff like that if it's, I don't know, normal stuff. Can I probably park here am i in this guy's way i think i'm in this guy's way all right he's gonna go deliver that uh to the green pool so i'm gonna swing this around yeah turning with this thing is a uh, you can't take sharp turns with it because it's very heavy oh i'm in the ditch yeah turning this thing fully around <laughs> not the best you always get that when you get some of the uh, heavier equipment though and this thing is pretty heavy it does require less horsepower than the tank tractor has just barely but it's still it's still pretty heavy so it makes uh for some interesting turns sometimes <laughs> all right we're just gonna park there for now go check some of these other guys out i mean look at this Ooh, more sorghum. I considered buying the grain mill this year just to start making flour out of the sorghum, but I don't know if we're gonna have the money to do it. It's kind of expensive and we're already really, really in debt. So you still make a decent amount from sorghum just uh, from selling it. I mean, it's not gonna be close to what you can get from productions, but you know, I think this year at least we'll just roll it like that. And one thing I wanted to check out was that disjointed field that still has grass on it. I'm gonna go see how that grass is looking. I think it should be at ready to harvest. Um, I mean, I guess I could also just check my map, but I think it should be at ready to harvest, but just stage one. So we're probably only gonna get one more harvest out of it this year. I guess one and a half. Yeah, that's looking like stage one to me. With us cutting it in September, we should, we should get two more harvests out of this guy so that's good it's gonna be weird because the fields are gonna be offset by about a month but at the end of the year it doesn't really matter too much since you end up just cutting it at the end of uh i think november anyways you technically could just let it sit over the winter and then it'll resume and keep growing into stage two but i don't know i uh i'd rather just take the gains at the end of the year call it good and move on to next year you know what i mean something nice about harvesting and i i love the animation of it spraying out the uh what's left behind from the sorghum there are some mods that actually make it so sorghum will drop straw but that was something i was curious about i don't know that much about sorghum so decided to just you know look it up a little bit and it doesn't seem like sorghum actually drops straw in real life like it's not used so you know I, i've always been kind of a I, I like keeping things realistic so that probably won't be a mod i will end up getting these angles are so strange. <laughs> it would have been quicker to just let them uh, continue to handle it. Hey, buckaroo, I need an unload. Get on up here, dog. Come on up here. I'm fully stopped. <laughs> uh, he's offloading. I can't, I can't be too upset there. Oh, man, just right in the corner, huh? Seems like everything's been really painless. With a lot of other operations, I've actually had trouble. Like when I'm taking out contracts and stuff like that, there's a lot of times where the automatic offloading just doesn't work. Um, it seems like this is working pretty well. I'll probably still want to get an auger wagon at some point. Makes things a bit simpler. It's especially useful once you're able to get a semi truck, because then the trailer, you can just slow.
slowly be filling it up, right? Can make things a bit easier, and I also just really like auger wagons. Chaser bins, as they're otherwise known. They're pretty cool, and I like how it looks when they're just, you know, they just gather, gather all the grain from the harvester, bring it on over to the semi, to the big trailer there, and then as soon as that fills up, it can leave. Makes it so there's a little less downtime, too. We could probably get planting this field. Um, I might as well finish this up at this point, and then just get this guy harvesting, I guess probably the small field over there. Okay, sir, I'm gonna need you to move, not completely run into me. You are right where I'm trying to go, man. <laughs> Uh, man, it's funny, the AI actually work together better than, like, if you start trying to do some of it yourself. It's pretty funny. The AI did a really good job on this field, um, for the most part, so I, I can't, can't be upset with it. And that, that is that field done there, look at that. Now, we will get the harvester over to, probably just our baby field over here. Not too far away, but I'll just make sure that he can actually get there. Um, uh, sorry to my fellow farmers. <laughs> this is probably why you're supposed to use a header trailer right here. I just, in real life, I would just be decimating this guy's corn. Like, two entire rows just completely taken out. Look at that grass growing, man. Alright, look at this sorghum up here. Our new field. This is like the field stone field, man. I raged out pretty hard at this field. <laughs> Uh, but we'll, we'll get it going here. Only issue is we are gonna need to do some, some auto drive shenanigans. Oh, actually, before I get started here, I should probably, since I have to do auto drive stuff, I should probably just get an AI on planting this field. So I will just go ahead and do that really quick. Very, very strange. I don't, what is going on here? Oh, you know what? He is starting with the wrong thing. I don't want him to do that. No, you want to start work on the headland. Uh, I don't know what the hell <laughs> this guy's up to. I, mean, I suppose I can just handle planting at this point. I, I thought that auto drive would take a lot longer. Hopefully it shouldn't have problems. I mean, knock on wood, but we'll see. Kind of like running this planter anyways, because it's so fast. <laughs> we got that random little chunk planted right in the middle, which is kind of weird, but oh well. Oh man, it's funny. Uh, <laughs> it's funny how the AI did this. Uh, I mean, that was my fault. I, I had him starting work on like the center of the field for whatever reason. Didn't uh, didn't work out so hot. I'm gonna get this thing turned as clean as I can, completely jackknifing it in the process. Uh, that's as clean as I can go. What can I tell you, man? <laughs> uh, which is to say, not clean at all. Look at that stone. I really should get a plow and probably fix that at some point. Maybe combine some fields. I could do that. I mean, I like the, the natural look of a lot of these fields, I have to be honest. So it's not always the most appealing to plow a lot of fields together. I think it makes sense. I felt the real distinct lack of space going on on some of these fields um, for, like, stuff, you know? A lot of people have talked to me about generators and adding more of them. And I have, I, you know, I've added, I have a windmill over there, a windmill over here. I could definitely add you know some solar panels and stuff like that but i just feel like i don't have a ton of room to put a lot of that sort of stuff down or not as much as i'd like might have something where you know i just buy a small field somewhere and you know, i could probably find a deal on the other side of the map or something and just turn it into a legit dedicated solar farm i think that makes a lot of sense versus just filling up every single little gap between my fields with generators which probably makes a lot of sense efficiency wise but I also don't really want to do that I don't really like that very much so yeah I'll probably do kind of an in-between I like adding a few generators here and there just to get that monthly income without going completely crazy so we will get this field cleaned up real quick I actually just want to take a sec to check in on our guys over here I'll look at that I was talking up how good these guys were working together and then they went and uh, messed it all up so we are reaching the point where we already have planted of course so it's gonna look <laughs> nice and awkward some of this is gonna be double planted it does, shouldn't matter especially with something like grass like rows really don't matter for that but in uh, in real life that would uh, that would be a pretty that'd be pretty ugly <laughs> So I don't know if we got all of this covered, so I'm just gonna go through it like we haven't already. I mean, turning this thing is always an adventure. <laughs> it just completely raises up my my track tires there. And these gigantic fields, you can just cut right through them so quickly. The direct drill 
capability is really cool for stuff like this. I like how it goes from, you know, harvested sorghum right into just planted field. It's very cool. Oh, I see that guy needs to be unloaded. Let me make sure everything's working properly here. Oh, he's done. Well, no wonder he's, he's, uh, he needs to be unloaded. <laughs> Okay, um, so time for the big field. So I think I'll get this guy harvesting first. Have a few more auto drive shenanigans. It might take a slightly longer for that one. Also, where am I going? Getting there should be annoying. <laughs> oh boy, this should be, this is, uh, this should be the fun part right here. <laughs> I don't think I can make it past that bridge. I don't have a header trailer, so yeah, we'll need to figure this out. Maybe drive through this guy's field right here. Once again, this would completely decimate his crop. <laughs> but oh well. Um, I think maybe we can get in here. <laughs> Starting to see why maybe getting a header trailer would be a decent idea. Oh, maybe? Oh, look at that. Perfect. Okay, and then just sneak in here. So we just got to take this guy up through the fast food restaurant, which is right there. Perfect. We're, we're driving through this field. I mean, it's covered in weeds, man. You got to you gotta weed your field for me to respect it. Otherwise, I am driving right through it. Let's be real. Yeah, look at that. No header trailer required. Oh, this is tighter than it should be. <laughs> oh, look at that sorghum. That is beautiful. I... I forgot that this was the field right here until I saw the color and then I just knew oh you know what it thinks we're doing two headland passes so it's gonna miss a little bit I'm gonna have to clean that up after but oh well see the tank tractor finished up oh man yeah that is <laughs> that is a rough one okay those guys should be good should be good <laughs> uh let's get back to whatever this is whatever's going on here you know it's probably gonna be easiest just to do a little uh headland pass again did one earlier can do one again so, you know, let's swing this around here, take the turn wide so it doesn't completely mess up the tank tractor. <laughs> mm, still still managed to mess it all up. Pretty typical stuff, though. Let's just do a little headland pass here, man. Nothing wrong with a little headland pass. Funny to be doing it at the end instead of the beginning and double planting some grass. Doesn't need to be a completely straight line. We just need to get everything, man. <laughs> all right, look at that. Should get it all. So final, very strange pass. That's what I get though. I started on my own and uh, had course play draw a route that had two headland passes, but I only did one. So that's how it goes, man. So we're actually making some good progress today. We're harvesting our last field. And let's see, these two are doing a great job here. Doing a fantastic job. It shouldn't take too long at all. And then, uh, so it's just planting the, the small fields. And then as soon as they're done harvesting that field, it'll be planting that one. And I do believe we'll be done for the day once we're once we're good there. So this is technically our, our most busy day of the year, but it hasn't felt too busy. I felt like the, the sorghum planting was actually even more busy. We had a lot more tools going on. I mean, we had weeding and rolling, fertilizing. We had to stone those fields as well of that stupid i'm driving across this because i swear every every ai field is just covered in stones i wonder if they just aren't programmed to take care of them which i don't know i that is like there's no contracts for taking care of them either that just seems so stupid to me that the ai would just leave them there but they're such a nuisance so anytime i end up buying a field it's just covered in stones and it is so annoying and these guys are going to be done like any minute here uh, not any minute but you know this field's going a lot quicker than i thought it would exciting stuff it's gonna be a lot of sorghum a lot of money I'm getting it getting it pretty close to being done got a couple cultivating contracts going at the same time it's funny i actually just picked one up for the field directly next to ours so there should be an ai coming out here any second and while they were doing that we have a field right here to plant I'm really happy with what we've been able to get equipment wise i feel like we set ourselves up really well i mean granted i'm doing stuff like renting this guy out and this is a fantastic planter maybe slightly cheesier than i intended with the rolling part of it but i mean you know it's fine 
It's just not gonna be a long-term thing. It just goes so fast. I'm so not used to it. The last planter we used went, you know, maybe like, my AD couldn't have gone more than what, like 12 miles an hour, but this thing consistently going 14 is crazy with this work width. We're, we're gonna have to buy one of these. Um, I just love the way this planter looks too. Uh, we are definitely going to the crick. Maybe not definitely. I realized I didn't need to be that like punctual with it because we are doing a headland pass here. <laughs> oh boy. Did I just rip into that guy's field there? <laughs> Whoopsies. Sorry man, I probably should have uh should have just raised this up. <laughs> I didn't even know I could do that. Uh there must just be some equipment that uh that does that, so whoops. Because raising this thing up is not it's not my favorite. It just makes uh navigation harder for some reason just because of how the weight distributes. I mean look at that. It totally took the the front wheel off or the back right wheel off. You can see the track kinda like comes back down afterwards. We will get this field done very, very quickly. And they will have that field done very, very quickly as well. Running this equipment really has me hopeful for the future and just how quickly we're going to be able to do some of these plants. It's going to be important to have this level of equipment, um, seeing as we're going to be doing a lot more harvest than, than this on average. <laughs> We are going to be doing a lot of harvests to keep up with uh, one, all everything that's needed for one billion dollars, man. We're just going to need to scale up how many harvests we have per year just to make it, you know, viable. It's so cool how much this field we can carve out all at once using this thing. It is awesome. I mean, it's hard to complain when we are making this good of gains on one pass. I mean, we're covering like a fourth of this field every single pass. It's kind of crazy. Maybe a fifth. <laughs> Not too shabby either way. And final pass here for planting this little this little guy. Would be nice to get, I don't know, probably those fields over there and carve this into one big field, or I guess this guy over here, but we kind of have that awkward uh, house set up there I don't think I can get rid of. All right, that field is fully planted. It should be stage one fertilized. Always got to turn on grass for whatever reason. It doesn't like to show that. So yeah, stage one fertilized, but that's pretty much all our fields right now, stage one. We'll get to that beautiful dark blue next month. I have to think, uh, you know, starting next year, I might transition our fields into, I'm kind of thinking barley might be, at least for the short term, barley and getting the the mill to, to start making flour and probably just going right into uh, bread. Um, I really like that production chain. So, oh, look, look at this. This harvesting looks like it is just wrapping up. Uh, I think that guy might need to move up there. <laughs> He is uh, slightly in the way, but that's all right. So while they're doing their thing, I can actually just get planting here. We should have, oh, we have more than enough seed, more than a fertilizer. I should have extra both. Looks like he'll just offload there. We'll just send that guy down to go deliver the rest of that sorghum. And that is all of our sorghum harvested right there. And we're done harvesting for the year. Our cultivating contract right there, just paying us a bit of extra money while we're working on this. So we're actually gonna be seeding this field and cultivating this one. I'll probably end up getting this one soon enough too. Making this into a mega field would be very interesting. Oh, I just realized there is no way I'm making it through there. <laughs> I mean, this header is kind of like comically large on this thing, but it works pretty well. I mean, we did all those harvests so fast. I love it. I'm glad we were able to get both of these on sale. You know, I think we'll probably just drop that off. They don't mind here at the gas station, right? Right? <laughs> Uh, this will be this will be a bit these combines really got a big gas tank man. All right, go and give me a slushy brother Now I'm not from the south, but I've heard the I've heard the tales of the peanuts in Coke and how good it is. I've always been a little curious about that. I can see how it could be good It's definitely kind of weird. Don't get me wrong here. Oh my did you see that? I just sent that thing into the atmosphere <laughs> Uh, that was awesome. Uh, I can see the appeal. A little bit, of, a little bit of sweet, a little bit of salty. It goes well together. I mean, there's already a decent amount of salt in Coke, so it kind of makes sense. And I mean, you know, you get something like McDonald's or something, which I haven't had in forever, actually, or any fast food. I'm not much of a fast foodie, honestly. You get that McDonald's Coke to go with your fries and your burger, and oh man, there's just something about that ice cold Coke from the from the soft, not the soft serve, from the uh, from the machine there it just tastes so good man oh, we just sent another sign flying it's like a beyblade there spinning <laughs> 
Ah, we are a menace in this town. Buying a gigantic header and no header trailer. That's just, that's just the tighter's way, man. While we're here, actually, I know I'm getting so sidetracked. It's like sidetrack of a sidetrack of a sidetrack. Should be planting, but now we're here checking, uh, <laughs> checking sorghum. What is our final tally? We'll see. Oh, 100, nearly 190,000. That is, whew, 190,000 liters of sorghum. And that's gonna be worth a lot of money, man. That's gonna be a lot of money. All right, now that I'm not distracted 800 times over, I can actually start planting. <laughs> Isn't that just so exciting? Just been burning gas over here, man. <laughs> and yeah, it's just it's just plant in this field and that's it. But look at this. It's gonna be gonna be a big, big grass harvest at the end of this year. As soon as all these fields are ready, we have a tiny one tomorrow, but then a big harvest to end the year. Fields are looking beautiful. There's something about the transition from the old like pieces of sorghum still left on here into the planted soil that's very, very satisfying. It just feels like I'm cutting right through the field, which I enjoy. I'm definitely gonna miss that, yeah. But we are done with planting for the day. All of our fields taken care of. Growing, 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 all that good stuff. All of our fields planted, growing grass, all of our sorghum harvested in the grain silo, ready to be shipped off. Very, very successful day for us. And honestly, didn't take that long. Uh, I was expecting a bit more of an in-depth process, but the fact that we were able to lease out a bit better of a planting setup and use our big harvester over there, it's just awesome. A very productive, very great day. We've got all of our fields harvested. So much sorghum, 190,000 liters, just chilling, waiting to be sold later this year. But yeah, I, I do believe that is it for August. I'm loving this sorghum. I'm loving this silage. It's just a great setup, man. I'll, I'll be seeing you guys next month. Time for a snooze.